the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. April Fool's Day carbon tax hike of 23 per cent will hit Nova Scotians especially hard. Uh, the Prime Minister's tax will cost $1,500 for the average Nova Scotia family, far more than they get back in rebates. That's why Nova Scotia's Assembly passed a unanimous motion with all three parties supporting it, calling for federal MPs from that province to vote with Conservatives to spike the heck. One of those MPs is from King's Hands, the chair of the Agriculture Committee, which has been studying the carbon tax paying for farmers. So the question is for the chair of the Agriculture Committee, will he vote with us to spike the hike? So, colleagues, uh, uh, of course, questions can be asked of uh, the government for regarding administrative issues of the government, and of course, to uh, committee chairs. It's important for Canadians to understand, though, that the, when questions are asked of committee chairs, it has to be uh, regarding stuff that is, has committee business. That's before the committee right now, and so, uh, in consultation. Uh, we realize that that isn't the issue that is here before, so I see that the Honourable uh, Minister for Housing is rising on his feet. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And look, what the Honourable Member is actually suggesting is false. We have real-world data to demonstrate in provinces where the system actually applies, families receive hundreds of dollars more each year than they pay in fuel charges. The Conservatives pretend to care about affordability, yet they oppose measures that put more money in the pockets of families. They pretend to care about affordability, but they oppose measures that protect seniors' pensions. They pretend to care about affordability, but they vote against measures to remove the interest on Canada student loans. Mr. Speaker, we will do everything we can to make life more affordable, including putting more money in the pockets of families while we fight climate change at the same time. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Well, that parliamentary censorship proves everything you need to know about this and everything else in this government. Right. I asked a question of the member for King's Hands, the chair of the Agriculture Committee, who's now studying the painful impacts of the carbon tax, and the front bench here shut him down, told him to sit down and shut up because they had a better mouthpiece for the PMO who would stand and speak in his stead. Mr. Speaker, the question is for the member for King's Hands, the chair of the Agriculture Committee. His committee studying how the carbon tax hurts farmers. Will he vote to spike the hike? Yeah. The Honourable Minister for Housing, Infrastructure and Community. Mr. Speaker, if the Honourable Member has qualms about the member for King's Hands, I can reassure him he is a champion for his community. He launched a petition recently to stand up to the Conservative government in Nova Scotia for changes to the agricultural sector in his community. Every time the Conservatives ask a question about the its environment, it's to find out ways that they can do less. The member for Renfrew, Nipissing, Pembroke has suggested flooding in the Ottawa River was a result of regulations that were not in place. The member from Caribou, Prince George, has suggested climate change is not a result of industrial pollution, but of more body heat from a growing population. The member from Red Deer, Lacombe, visited school kids to say carbon dioxide was plant food. Mr. Speaker, this... Leader of the Opposition. He's absolutely right. It is a joke. An April Fool's joke. And the joke is on Canadian taxpayers, especially Nova Scotians, who will have to pay $1,500 in higher carbon taxes after that hike goes ahead. He says that the member for King's Hands is a champion. A champion who can't even speak. Who's silenced by his own. The opposition has 10 seconds left on the clock. 
Will the censored champion break his silence and tell us, will he vote for his constituents to spike the hike, or will he rip them off on April Fool's Day? The Honourable Minister for Housing, Infrastructure and Communities. The Conservatives want to peddle false information to trick Canadians into voting for them. The reality proven, not by projections but by real-world data is that people who live in my province receive more money every year from the rebates that they receive than the fuel charge that they pay. Everything the Conservatives do... Order. The Honourable Minister has 15 seconds left on the clock. Mr. Speaker, at every instance the Conservatives have an opportunity to speak in House, they do one of two things. Advocate to do less on the environment or to take money from families in my community. I will support neither. We will do whatever we can to put more money in the pockets of families and do the right thing for future generations. Order. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, the question was for the silent member from King's Hands. He is asked to explain how he's voting for a carbon tax of $1,500 fa per family that only pays back $963 in rebates. I asked him specifically to stand and answer, but he's been shut down and shut up by his masters in the PMO. So once again, will the chair of the Agriculture Committee and member for King's Hands stand in, uh, in today and tell us whether he will vote to spike the hike or raise the tax? to please listen to their to their house leader and the house leader teams the honorable government house leader thank you mr speaker and the, the leader of the opposition knows full well the rules of this place and the, knows full well that members on this side are proud and pleased to defend the initiatives and the affordability measures i'm going to ask the uh, honorable member from uh, Sherwood Park, Fort Saskatchewan, to wait his turn to ask a question before taking the floor. The Honourable Government House Leader has 23 seconds left on the clock. The Leader knows the rules of this place and knows that this, the, for, on this side of the House we're pleased and proud to, uh, to speak to the affordability measures and the things that we're putting in place to make life more affordable for Canadians. But while we're on this theme, I have a, I have a question for the member of the Defence Committee from Selkirk, in, Selkirk Interlake. Why did he sell out the people of Ukraine in voting against? Order. Order. I'll ask the Honourable Government House Leader to please have order in this House. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, the people of King's Hence, Nova Scotia, are learning they don't have a voice in Parliament because he has been silenced. The Prime Minister is terrified that he might stand up and get off script. He knows that the unanimous will of the Nova Scotia Legislature, Liberals, Conservatives and New Democrats, was passed in a motion calling for all of that province's MPs to vote against the hike. So will the member for King's Hands, who is the chair of the Agriculture Committee, stand up for farmers in his riding and vote with us to spike the hike? Yes yeah. or no? The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, the member for King's Pants stands up for farmers, stands up for his constituents, stands up for the people of Nova Scotia, and stands up for the people of Canada every single day. On this side of the house, we are incredibly proud to have him as our colleague. And one thing that he knows is hit, the people of King's Hands do not need cuts, 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 and that is all the Conservatives have to offer them or any single Canadian. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, the 
Member for King's Hants is in the witness protection program today. He can't possibly stand up when his whip waves for him to sit down, which is exactly what happened a moment ago when I asked him a legitimate question as chair of the Agriculture Committee, a committee that's studying the devastating impact of the carbon tax on farmers in his riding and across the country. So for a sixth time, will he come out of the witness protection program and announce whether he will vote for our motion despite the hike? Yeah. The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, the Conservatives love to talk Canada down. They traffic in fear and falsehood. But on this side of the House, we believe in Canada and we believe in Canadians. And that's why I am so glad to share some good news with the members of this House. And that is the inflation number for February, which came out this morning, 2.8% below expectations. That is the second month in a row in January was 2.9. Within the target, our plan is working, Mr. Speaker.